lunchtime, a regular day in my book. A greasy plate of pasta with some chicken noodle soup on the side, maybe even a glass of water too. Like many lunchrooms, it was loud and chaotic. Everybody was screaming about a shadow boxing game. Some girls were playing truth and dare and shouting after getting a crazy dare. And some kids were loudly complaining about an assignment. This could explain how noisy my lunchroom was that day. But to give you a taste of it, here is a sound clip of our lunchroom on a random day. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, cafeterias can reach a decibel level of 101, which means they can be as loud as a lawnmower or a motorcycle. The commotion was starting to give me a headache. But then it got worse, and worse, and worse. I started feeling pain, tingling, and pressure in my head and ears, which became overwhelming. I couldn't deal with the noise and the pain anymore. I broke into tears, which could have been worse. But I was in a lunchroom, a place full of people who judge you. So I tried to keep it hidden. This kind of situation happens often to me because I'm highly sensitive to loud noises and overstimulation. But it never got this serious, ever. Luckily, a teacher noticed my distress. Concerned, she asked if I was okay. And I shared my struggle with loud spaces, emphasizing how it was recently getting worse. She took action by addressing the whole cafeteria and urging everyone to no lower the noise level. She said, there's a student having a hard time being in this lunchroom because of the noise. Please, quiet down. But sadly, it fell on deaf ears. What stood out about this teacher's support was the extraordinary level of compassion and understanding. Even though I have previously shown physical signs of being annoyed by loud spaces, many teachers haven't seen this as a problem. But here's what I've noticed. If a kid with crutches enters a crowded room, the teacher immediately demands for everyone to move. And usually, everyone does. However, if the impairment is invisible, like mine, it often goes unnoticed. So, even when a teacher does ask for everyone to be quiet, kids go back to their normal noise level in seconds. Why is it that you have a visible impairment? Most teachers will immediately take notice, and kids will listen. But if they have one that's not, they might not even acknowledge it. Many schools focus on visible impairments, such as installing a ramp at the entrance of the school or putting support bars in bigger bathroom stalls. However, there seems to be a gap in providing support for students like me who need a quiet space to thrive. According to Kent State University in Forbes magazine, 96% of disabilities in America are invisible. Since there are so many invisible disabilities, you may have a hard time knowing whether a person has one or not. Students with both invisible and visible impairments depend on schools to make them happy, comfortable, and successful. According to a literature review by Kirsten Perry of the University of Maryland, many students with invisible disabilities don't receive the accommodations they are entitled to. I believe there is a lack of awareness about invisible impairments and their impact on their classmates. Today, I want to clarify what these invisible challenges are and propose further empathy and accommodations in school so that people like me can flourish. Let's start defi oh, by defining what we mean by invisible impairments. The Invisible Disability Association defines an invisible impairment as a physical, mental, or neurological condition that isn't visible from the outside, yet can limit or challenge a person's movements, senses, or activities. Here are just a few examples. ADHD, anxiety, depression, dyslexia, autism, autoimmune disorder, and OCD. And the National Education Association states that these conditions can impact a person's ability to learn or work. Many schools today have accommodations for some of these impairments, like for students who need extra time or less distracting environments. But what about students who have strong dislike for noises or certain sounds? How many of you have heard of misophonia? Misophonia is a sound tolerance disorder where people are oversensitive to certain sounds. 
This could end up distracting a person, possibly causing them to have a hard time learning and concentrating in school or other environments. Specific sounds can even trigger physical and emotional responses. According to the Cleveland Clinic, triggers include chewing gum or food, pen clicking, ticking of a clock, and the responses include anger, faster heartbeat, and for someone like me, tears. Now, I am not diagnosed with misophonia, but the loud noises still affect me. Schools should be a place to learn and have fun, but for people like me, it's not so sparkly and dreamy because instead of learning, I'm easily distracted by my surroundings. But guess what? Reducing noise in school environments can benefit everyone. In fact, in a 2020 CDC survey, three in four students are exposed, exposed to loud noises daily, which can even cause hearing loss. Whenever I would bring my Apple Watch to school, it constantly warned me that staying too long in the environment I was in can cause temporary hearing loss. According to an article from the US Health and Human Services, noise levels that are above 85 decibels can cause hearing damage. And remember that the average school lunchroom is 101 decibels, which, as you can see, can cause a lot of damage. One suggestion I have that can help all students is that about for $50 a piece, schools can buy a decibel noise meter. For regularly crowded areas, such as lunchrooms, hallways, and large classrooms, when the noise level rises above 85 decibels, the teachers could settle down the class so they don't risk causing any hearing damage. This could be also helpful because it can teach kids how to self-monitor loud noises. But what else can schools do to specifically help students with strong emotional reactions to sounds? Well, I have a few ideas. Number one, have designated quiet areas in or around the lunchroom. We could have a room close to the lunchroom that is quieter and emptier for kids who don't enjoy places in crowd, allowed spaces in crowding. Or, if the school doesn't have an extra room, what about providing the option of kids eating outside? Number two, we could have a fast pass to avoid loud spaces. When I went to Disney with my Girl Scout troop, my troop leader signed me up for the Disability Access Service, which allowed me to skip lines and get into rides early. This helped me because some environments with lines are crowded, loud, and full of excitedly screaming children, just like a lunchroom. Perhaps we can have an accommodation at school for people who have trouble with crowded and loud spaces. They could have a pass to leave class to get lunch earlier so they can bypass the big crowds and large lines, getting to a table in a quieter location first. We could also use this idea for when someone gets overwhelmed or overstimulated in class. They could also leave class for a brief moment to go to the library to get some peace and quiet. When I get overstimulated, I never have a place to go besides the bathroom, which is usually occupied by girls who skipped class for fun. Having a, a place like the library would really help us kids since we, they would have a safe space, somewhere where they feel comfortable. And finally, have an accommodation for students to take part in classes with fewer people in them. This makes the classes quieter and less crowded, the perfect combo. In summary, there's lots of things that schools can do for kids who have an invisible impairment, like mine, that can disrupt their academic journey. I challenge school heads to be more inclusive and empathetic about these invisible impairments, starting with one noise monitor at a time and allowing either eating outside or having a special pass to get to a quiet area for lunch. Please don't let this go into one year and out the other. With just a bit of effort, we can accomplish what was in once an impossible task of quieting down a bunch of middle schoolers, turning chaos into calm, and finding a safe space for everyone.